Exodus chapter 6 Then the Lord said to Moses Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh Because of my mighty hand he will let them go Because of my mighty hand he will drive them out of his country God also said to Moses I am the Lord I appeared to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob I did not make myself fully known to them I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they resided as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have, I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore was uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him because of their discouragement and harsh labor. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the Israelites go out of his country. But Moses said to the Lord, If the Israelites will not listen to me, why would Pharaoh listen to me, since I speak with faltering lips? Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron about the Israelites and Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he commanded them to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. These were the heads of their families. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, were Hanok and Paulo, Hezron and Carmi. These were the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Sohar and Shaul. The son of Canaanite woman, these were the clans of Simeon. These were the names of the sons of Levi. According to their records, Gershon, Kohath, and Mirar. Levi lived uh, 137 years. The sons of Gershon by clans were Libni and Shimei. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uze. Kohath lived 133 years. The sons of Mirari were Mahli and Mushi. These were the clans of Levi, according to their records. Amram married his father's sister Jophan who bore him Aaron and Moses. Amram lived 137 years. The sons of Ehizar were Korah, Nepeg, and Zikri. The sons of Uze were Mishael, Elzaphan, and Sitri. Aaron married Elsheba, daughter of Aminabad, Dab, and sister of Nahab. And she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Elzer, and Itamar. The sons of Korah were Asir, Elkanah, and Abiasaf. These were the Korahite clans. The Elzair, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Puthe, and she bore him Phinehas. These were the head of the Levite, fa- Levite families, clan by clan. It was this Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, Br- Bring the Israelites out of Egypt by their divisions. They were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, about bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. This same as Moses and Aaron. Now when the Lord spoke to Moses in Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything I tell you. But Moses said to the Lord, Since I speak with faltering lips, why would Pharaoh listen to me? Exodus chapter 7 Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh, to let the Israelites go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and to wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions. My people, the Israelites, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, 
perform a miracle. Then say to an, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did as just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers, and the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts. Each one threw down his stuff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's stuff swallowed up their stuffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. As he goes out to the river, confront him on the bank of Nile, of the Nile, and take it in your hand, the stuff that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, The Lord, the, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go, so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now, you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, it will strike the water of Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die. The river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and the canals, over the ponds and all the reservoirs, and they will turn into blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in vessels of wood and stone. Moses and Aaron did as just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile. And the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same thing by their secret arts. Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his palace and did not take even his to heart, even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the river. Seven days passed after the Lord struck the Nile. Exodus chapter 8 Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs on your whole country. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace and your bedroom and onto your bed, into the houses of your officials and on your people, and into the ovens and kneading the troughs. The frogs will come upon you and your people and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same thing, things by their secret arts. They also made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron on and said, Pray to the Lord and take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave you to your uh, to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people that you and your houses may be rid of the frogs, except for those that remain in the night. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said, Moses replied, And it will be as you say, so that you may know there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials, your people. They will remain only in the night. After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyards, and in the fields. They were piled into heaps, and the land reeked of them. But when the Pharaoh saw that there, that there was a relief, he hardened his heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your stuff and strike the dust of the ground. And throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. They did this, and when Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground, gnats came on people and animals, and the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats. But when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not. 
since the gnats were on people and animals everywhere, the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh, as he goes to the river and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies. Even the ground will be covered with them. But on that day, I will deal different, differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. And the Lord did this. Dense swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. Throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. The sacrifices we offer the Lord, good, our God, would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, they will not stone us. Will they not stone us? We must take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord, our God, as he commands us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go to offer sacrifices to the Lord, your God, in the wilderness. But you must not go very far. Now pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only let Pharaoh be sure that he does not act decidedly again by not letting the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Not a fly remained. But this time also Pharaoh hardened his heart and he would not let the people go.